This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Have you ever woken up in the morning and realized you just had to do something? Maybe it was something totally out of the ordinary, something brand new. But you knew deep down it was a quest you had to pursue. That's what this story is about. It's called Miss Rabbit's Cookie Business. Take it away, Maeve. Remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine a picture in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Start a cookie business. Miss Rabbit sat up in bed. It was early morning, still pitch dark inside the warren she shared with her mother, father, and seventeen younger brothers and sisters. It took several seconds for her eyes to adjust, then she scanned her room. She had heard something, hadn't she? Or was it a dream? Start a cookie business, the voice repeated. Louder. That was no dream. Miss Rabbit leapt up as if she'd been pricked on the tail with one of her mother's knitting needles. She dashed around, checking the closet under her bed. Who's there? she called. She had heard a voice, a clear voice, speak to her in the dark, which meant there had to be someone there. Only there wasn't. Miss Rabbit was so caught up in the mystery of the voice, she didn't stop to consider its message until she was in the kitchen, stirring a cup of tea. Start a cookie business. How silly. She put it out of her mind. She dressed, ate a breakfast of cucumber patties, and headed off for work all before anyone else woke up. Miss Rabbit was halfway to work when an enormous chocolate cookie lumbered towards her. Ah! She darted behind a bush, though she wasn't sure why, since what could a cookie possibly do to her? Only it wasn't a cookie. It was a bear. The bear loafed past her. It must have been hunched over when she'd seen it, creating an optical illusion. That was it, she told herself. Anyone could have mistaken that bear for a cookie. She was nearly to work when another cookie appeared on a rock. Miss Rabbit blinked a few times. Was it really there? Yes. It was a ginger cookie with a dusting of soil. Delicious. Miss Rabbit reached out a paw and... Hey, paws off, lady. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you were a... Miss Rabbit looked down at the irritated toad she had just grabbed and found she could not finish that sentence. The toad hopped away, looking absolutely nothing like a cookie. Miss Rabbit tried to shake off this strange event. She made it to work and picked up her knapsack filled with letters to deliver. All day, as she stopped at mailboxes across the forest, she saw cookies. Sometimes they were real things she mistook for cookies. Other times, her brain seemed to conjure them up out of nowhere before they'd disappear. That night, as Miss Rabbit sat on the edge of her bed, pulling her satin night bonnet over her ears, she laughed at the strangeness of her day. There was no way she'd ever start a cookie business. It was absurd. It was nonsensical. It was, start a cookie business, the voice said, more insistent this time at daybreak. 
It was not a request, nor an encouragement. It was a command. This time, Miss Rabbit listened. She rose from her bed with a strange excitement building in her. She moved quickly, as if her limbs knew her aim, even as her mind struggled to catch up. Soon she was in the kitchen, covered in flour. Now might be a good time to tell you more about Miss Rabbit's cookie-making history. This was not the first time Miss Rabbit had made cookies, not nearly, but it was the first time in a long while. As a bunny, Miss Rabbit spent hours in the kitchen before the sun came up, dreaming up recipes. It was the only time of day when she wasn't bothered by her many siblings or shooed out to play by her parents. Once, she had even won an award for her cookies. And the winning cookie is Little Miss Rabbit's Vanilla Carrot Cookie with Turnip. (gasps) Oh, my, excuse me. (laughs) Turnips don't belong in cookies. Vanilla Carrot Cookie with Rutabaga Crumble. Making cookies had been one of the great joys of Miss Rabbit's childhood, but that's where it had stayed. She had tucked cookie making in a drawer filled with childish things, along with her dolls and her paw paints. And now, because of a mysterious voice, she was pulling cookie making out of the drawer of her childhood and pulling a tray of cookies out of the oven. Miss Rabbit put her nose to a cookie and breathed in. Mmm, cinnamon sweet potato spice. Then she heard chewing. Miss Rabbit whipped around to see her sister, Genevieve, gobbling a cookie. I wasn't ready for anybody to try one yet. Uh, This is the best cookie I've ever had. You know, you should really... What did you say? This is the best cookie I've ever had, Genevieve said, popping the last bite in her mouth. You're my favorite sister, you know, Miss Rabbit said. It wasn't true. Miss Rabbit loved all her sisters the same. She and Genevieve both knew that. Miss Rabbit shooed her little sister out of the kitchen with a smile. It was Miss Rabbit's day off from work, but she had no intention of staying home and lolling about. She left the warren with a basket of cookies swinging from her arm. Were the colors of the forest always this vivid? Did the birds always sing this sweetly? Hello there, Miss Rabbit. Mighty fine morning, don't you agree? Why, yes. That frog. He'd never said hello before, had he? Hopping through the forest on that spring day, it seemed as though possibility was around every corner. Miss Rabbit had no idea why the voice had insisted she start a cookie business, but somehow... Everything felt right. She had stepped onto a path, and it was leading her somewhere good. At that moment, it was leading her to the market. She had cookies. She had enthusiasm. She could set up a booth and start her cookie business that very day. And she might have. She really might have. But Miss Rabbit ran into her neighbor, Fern. Miss Rabbit, what are you doing up so early on your day off? Oh, hello, Fern. What have you got there? Something for me? Fern was a business rabbit who sold items out of the back of a cart she toted around. Miss Rabbit had known her for years and considered Fern a friend. But I'm going to let you in on a secret. 
Listen closely now. Fern was not really Miss Rabbit's friend. She seemed like a friend. She acted like a friend at times. But when it came down to it, Fern was not a good friend to Miss Rabbit. Unfortunately, this kind of thing happens a lot. If it hasn't already, it might happen to you. It can be confusing trying to sort out the real friends from the imposters. Still, it would have been fine if Miss Rabbit had run into Fern a few months after she'd started her cookie business. Maybe even a few weeks after. But it was not fine to run into her on the very first day. When you begin something new, you're a beginner. Who are you to start a cookie business? Who are you to start a horsehair barrette company? Who are you to open a shop devoted to selling secondhand suspenders for gophers? At first, you're a nobody, that's who. You don't really have any business doing those things, especially the secondhand gopher suspenders. But if you keep going, and you put one paw in front of the other, you may, in time, start to figure things out. Though, at the beginning, before you know what you're doing, you can be thrown off course rather easily. That is why it was not fine that Miss Rabbit ran into Fern, a rabbit she considered a friend, but really was not as she hopped towards the market. As much as I wish I could say, Miss Rabbit said a quick hello, hopped around Fern, and continued on her new life path. That's not what happened. What's in the basket? Fern asked, a bit of a gleam in her eyes. She set down her cart, which was filled with what looked to be tools and small pieces of furniture. Miss Rabbit hesitated, as if caught doing something she shouldn't. How silly. She hadn't done anything wrong. Cookies, actually. Cookies, eh? I'm starting a cookie business. There. She'd said it. Wow. It was, well, it was thrilling to say the words. I'm on my way to the market. I thought I'd set up a little booth. A cookie business, eh? That's a very competitive industry, Fern said. Miss Rabbit didn't quite know why, but she wished she hadn't stopped to talk to Fern. I suppose it is, Miss Rabbit said. Could I try one? Could I try one of your cookies? How forward. Miss Rabbit had a strong urge to say no to the request, but she had no good reason to deny Fern a cookie. All right, Miss Rabbit said, handing one over. Ha, huh, Fern murmured. Ha, huh. she muttered again. Miss Rabbit frowned. It's pretty good, Fern said, halfway through the cookie. Miss Rabbit's mouth became a desert. Pretty good wasn't good enough. A twinge of doubt ran through her. Fern silently finished the cookie, brushing the crumbs from her paws. Miss Rabbit's thoughts piled on top of one another in her mind. What am I even doing? Listening to a voice. How ridiculous. What if every bunny thinks my cookies are pretty good? What does Genevieve know about anything? She's just a child. I'm making a fool of you who anybody home? Miss Rabbit looked up to see Fern staring at her. Did you hear what I said? Sorry, my mind must be elsewhere. I said, you need to talk to my neighbor, Belinda McSquirlish. She's a business expert, and she owes me a favor. I let her give me an IOU for a tree swing I sold her last month. Here, I'll take you to her. She can help you with your business plan. My business plan? 
Miss Rabbit regretted the words as soon as they escaped her lips. Tell me you have a business plan. Um, oh dear, you need more help than I thought. Fern pushed her cart beneath a shrub until it was hidden. Let's go. She's usually home at this hour. Miss Rabbit looked longingly down the trail that led to the market. The word no seemed to burn a hole in her tongue. Okay, Miss Rabbit said aloud. Fern was trying to help her and sacrificing her day to do it. Besides, Miss Rabbit told herself, she didn't know the first thing about starting a business. She allowed herself to be ushered off the path towards Belinda McSquirrelish's tree. A voice told you to start a cookie business? Belinda McSquirrelish had lifted her teacup from the office desk inside her tree. Now, the teacup hung in the air, suspended in Belinda's paw. Miss Rabbit cringed. I should not have said that. I definitely should not have said that. She saw Belinda McSquirrelish and Fern exchange a look. The three of them were in Belinda's tree, and what a lavish tree it was. Awards dotted the walls, all kinds of fancy-sounding business awards that seemed to shout, I know what I'm doing. It wasn't a real voice, Miss Rabbit stammered. Obviously. Obviously, Belinda repeated. Miss Rabbit, was it? Yes. Miss Rabbit, I'm going to help you. Don't you worry. Now tell me your origin story. My origin story? Paint me a picture of your journey. And let's leave out that little detail about the voice, okay? <laughs> well, I started making cookies as a child. I loved to invent new, interesting recipes. How darling. Go on. I guess I wanted to reconnect with the childlike joy of making cookies I felt back then. And the joy of brightening someone's day. With a cookie. Yes. Belinda McSquirrelish wrinkled her brow. We'll work on the origin story. Let's talk about your launch. My launch? Soft launch, hard launch. What do you have in the works? Go. Miss Rabbit blinked. Did she imagine it? Or did Belinda and Fern exchange another look? Well, I... You know what? I know exactly who to send you to. She's a forest marketing expert. Belinda scribbled an address on a paper and gave it to Fern, who began pushing Miss Rabbit out the door. Come on, let's go. Wait, um, hold on a minute, Miss Rabbit said, straightening herself. Uh, Belinda, wouldn't you like to try a cookie? Miss Rabbit held out a cookie with a shaky smile. Belinda McSquirrelish eyed it, as if she'd never seen a cookie before in her life. Finally, she said, I'm not really a cookie kind of squirrel. Miss Rabbit recoiled as if she'd been bitten. She slipped the cookie back into her basket and allowed Fern to lead her out of Belinda's office. I think the first step is to get all the crows crowing about your cookie business. Miss Rabbit and Fern sat in stiff chairs inside a tree belonging to Miss Chippy, a chipmunk with enormous eyes that seemed to grow bigger when she was excited. Miss Rabbit couldn't remember the trip to Miss Chippy's home. It was as if she'd floated there, with Fern guiding her by the elbow. Crows, you say? Fern asked, her paws crossed over her chest. Ravens, too, although I've had some trouble with them. So many opinions, if you know what I mean. I do, Fern said, nodding solemnly. I don't, Miss Rabbit thought to herself. 
How did I end up here? So we'll have the crows perched on different treetops around the forest, and oh, this will be so fun. We can have them all crow about your, uh, wait, what kind of business was it? Cookies, Fern said before Miss Rabbit could answer. How cute. Anyway, once everyone hears those crows going on and on about Miss Rabbit's crackers. Cookies. Right, cookies. Well, they'll all want some. I can just hear them now. Have you heard about Miss Rabbit's cookies? Caca! Everybody's crowing about them. Caca! Miss Chippy giggled with delight. <laughs> Sounds great, doesn't it? Miss Rabbit tried to breathe normally. It sounds incredible, Fern said. Miss Rabbit, what do you think? Can you see it? Can you hear it? Caca! Miss Rabbit's cupcakes are delicious. Caca! Cookies, Fern interjected. Caca! Miss Rabbit's cookies are delicious. Caca! Miss Chippy's eyes sparkled. Can you hear it, Miss Rabbit? I suppose so. You are the expert. I am. That's true, Miss Chippy said, her eyes sweeping across the many books she'd authored, neatly organized on a nearby shelf. Miss Rabbit had that feeling again. That awful feeling. How did I end up here? Miss Chippy was going on and on about the crows. It's important to make it seem like it's all, you know, grass roots, tree roots, if you know what I mean. But Miss Rabbit found it difficult to focus. She was trying to work out how all this had happened. She left her warren with the cookies, filled with so much motivation, and... Just 982 walnuts. Oh, that's so reasonable. Fern trilled. Miss Rabbit's eyes snapped up to Miss Chippy. Excuse me? That's my very reasonable fee for the crow orchestration. Miss Chippy smiled broadly. Those crows certainly don't round up themselves. And they can be quite dramatic. Always lamenting. 982 walnuts. Miss Rabbit imagined herself collecting walnuts day and night for weeks. When would she ever have time to bake cookies? Her cheeks turned crimson. Fern, you'll get 10%, of course, for bringing her, Miss Chippy said with a wink. Suddenly, Miss Rabbit wanted nothing to do with any of it. She didn't want anything to do with cookies, or with business, or with forest marketing experts, or with high-maintenance crows. This had been a huge mistake. I need to go, Miss Rabbit said, standing abruptly. Ouch. The ceiling in Miss Jippy's house was low for a rabbit. All right, well, let's be in touch. Thanks, um, for your time, Miss Rabbit sputtered and dashed out of the tree. She hopped away into the forest as quickly as she could before Fern even made it out the door. She's clueless, isn't she? It's sad. Miss Rabbit? Miss Rabbit? Now where'd she go? She'd gone to the ridge. It overlooked a lovely tree-filled valley. From her spot on a rock, Concealed beneath the camouflage of a scrub oak, Miss Rabbit could peek out at the land extending into the distance. She could see a hint of the river that she knew snaked through the woods. The ridge was a place she'd visited many times to find quiet, to find peace. It was a place that reminded her Of all that was good, she needed that just then. Leaving her warren that morning, she'd been on a path. Somehow, she'd gone terribly off track. (sighs) She was also exhausted. Miss Rabbit laid down in the rock and 
without meaning to, fell asleep beneath the shade of the scrub oak. Start a cookie business. The voice pulled Miss Rabbit out of a dream. She lifted her head from the rock, and her paw went to her neck, aching from her odd sleeping position. Start a cookie business. I don't know how to start a cookie business, she said to the late afternoon air. Well, I'd buy your cookies any day of the week. Miss Rabbit turned to see a crow standing a couple of feet away, eating a cookie. Ah, what are you doing here? I'm sorry, I was just famished, and I smelled your cookies. You know, they could have attracted a predator. Miss Rabbit's ears perked up. She hadn't thought of that. Can I have more? Miss Rabbit peered at the crow. You like my cookies? I love them. Would you pay for my cookies? Do you accept millipedes? Miss Rabbit hadn't considered forms of payment. Yes, I do accept millipedes, she said, as if she had considered it. And you can find me at the forest market tomorrow. I'll be there, the crow said lifting into the air, and I'll pay for the ones I ate. Miss Rabbit smiled for the first time since that morning. She skipped home, seeing cookies everywhere. Back at the Warren, she baked late into the night. She slept a few hours, then rose before daybreak to prepare. Genevieve shuffled into the kitchen and Miss Rabbit plied her with cookies in four different flavors. I can't pick a favorite. That's okay, Miss Rabbit said. Actually, that's perfect. She had the day off from work, but she wasn't planning to loll about. This time, when she left the Warren, Miss Rabbit traveled directly to the forest market and arrived before it opened. You need a booth, eh? Said the market manager, a badger with a perpetual scowl. I'll take anything you have. I'll take the smallest one. That's what she got. Miss Rabbit had the smallest booth in the whole market, at the far end, where there was little paw traffic. Even so, when the market opened, customers trickled in, drawn by the aroma of Miss Rabbit's cookie samples. She'd taken ten cookies and split them into fourths, which she set out for free. Soon, there was a steady stream of creatures looking to get a bite. As promised, the crow showed up. He handed over a pouch filled with millipedes. Then, he bought five more cookies. They're for a friend. Sure they are. These are delicious. Is that turmeric? It is. Marty, you gotta try this cookie. Eh, I'm looking at these discount tail socks. Marty, I'm telling you, you gotta try this cookie. Within a few hours, Miss Rabbit's cookies sold out. She could barely fit what she'd earned into her knapsack. The pouch of millipedes, a sack of potatoes... A giant snail she wasn't sure she wanted in her warren. Animals had pushed their items across the table just to buy her cookies. Every single one had left, smiling. All because she listened to that little voice. As Miss Rabbit hopped home for the day, without really knowing her plans... Without really caring, she heard a crow in a nearby tree. Kaka, kaka, cookies, cookies, kaka, cookies. It was the crow she'd met, crowing about her cookies. It was just one crow, that's true, but it didn't cost a single walnut. <laughs> 
I confess this story is slightly autobiographical, which means it kind of happened to me. Not exactly. I don't have a cookie business, and I don't plan to. Still, it's a bit similar to how I started telling stories. Like Miss Rabbit, I had a little voice pushing me onward towards my goal. And like Miss Rabbit, I started small. I don't know where Miss Rabbit will end up, but I have a feeling she's going to make it in her own way. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are making it possible for me to keep sharing my cookies, I mean my stories, with children around the world. Thank you to Maeve for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you, as always, for listening in.